Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. My name is Sammy Fryer, licensed realtor in the state of South Carolina. And veterans, veterans, listen up. What I'm about to talk about could potentially save you tens of thousands of dollars. So the VA loan is a great opportunity for our veterans, providing a scenario where you can get a mortgage on a home, get a loan to buy a home without a down payment and without carrying private mortgage insurance. However, as a measure to help account for or offset some of the costs of the program, being that those elements aren't in play, VA loans have what is called a VA funding fee. And the VA funding fee is a one-time payment that is required by the Department of Veterans Affairs for most borrowers. Uh, as far as the amount, it's actually circumstantial, so it's really on a case-by-case -case basis, but it ranges pretty much anywhere from 1.4 to 3.6% of the total amount of the loan. And so by doing the math, you can clearly see that we're talking about a lot of money when we talk about this VA funding fee. Now, notice that I said that it's a one-time payment that's required for most borrowers. There are a group of five people who make up an exemptions list, and there's one category that we're going to focus on on this video because it's relatively new. Now, the five categories directly from VA.gov are listed on your screen, but they are various circumstances related to disability make up the first two. The second would be if you're a surviving spouse of a veteran that's receiving indemnity or dependency. The fourth would be if you received a memorandum rating prior to the close of the loan stating that you're eligible for compensation based on a pre-discharge claim. But the fifth one and the focus of our video today is if you are an active duty service member who can provide evidence prior to the close of your loan. So prior to the closing date of the loan that you have received a Purple Heart. And so the way that these exemptions are documented is on what's called a COE or a certificate of eligibility. And if you're an active duty service member and you have received a Purple Heart, then you need to go in and make sure that your COE is updated. Now, I've provided a link down in the description that gives you step by steps. This is directly from VA.gov, by the way, that gives you step by step directions and how to put in your application and or update your application for your certificate of eligibility. And you really want to do this prior to buying a home, prior to your home shopping process. I'm going to even say prior to speaking to a lender, this is a preliminary thing that you want to go ahead and take care of before you go into your home buying process. And I'm going to tell you why in just a minute. So again, I'll put a link down in the description of how to apply for your COE or how to update your certificate of eligibility. Now, the reason that the one we're focusing on today is a big one is because it's relatively new. Under the Trump administration on June the 25th of 2019, the Blue Water Navy Vietnam Veterans Act of 2019 was instituted and signed in. Uh, that took effect in the beginning of 2020, I believe. And that's what added in that fifth category for active duty Purple Heart recipient military service members. Now, I want to give you a practical example of why this is so important, because this is something that can slip through the cracks and come out of your pocket. When we're talking about 1.4 to 3.6 percent of the total amount of a loan in a lot of cases where there's not a down payment going in and you've got 300, 400,000, 500,000, 600,000, 700,000 dollar homes, you're talking about a large amount of money. And so we recently had a client who was a Purple Heart recipient who did not have an updated certificate of eligibility. His current certificate of eligibility or COE did not reflect the Purple Heart. So when the lender looks at it, they see a current COE. They have no reason to assume that it's not current and up to date. Now, you may say, well, they could ask the question, but the point is they have something reflecting in front of them. They really don't have a reason to make an assumption that it is not correct. And of course, the same would go for your realtor being the third line of defense in this scenario. If the lender's not questioning it, they certainly wouldn't have any reason to, especially if they weren't aware of what went into law under the Trump administration in 2019. And so in this case, our buyer had a $10,717 fee, and he just so happened to have it brought to his attention that being that in his case, he was a Purple Heart recipient and an active duty service member, that he was exempt from paying this fee. He was able to quickly update his COE and get that fee removed from his transaction prior to our closing. And so it all worked out. However, it made me curious how many of our veterans out there have closed on loans, on homes that were eligible, possibly because of the newness of this or whatever the case may be, but it slipped through the cracks over recent years, especially since we had COVID and there was chaos in a lot of places in a lot of ways. And they are currently 
eating the cost of a fee that they really were actually eligible to be exempt from. And so I want to put out this short video, give you some helpful resources directly from va.gov. Again, they're linked down in the description, uh, specifically as far as the link for how you can go ahead and apply for your certificate of eligibility. And I want to stress this because all over the country, I'm telling you that it's very plausible that this could slip through the cracks and you could have an eligibility to be exempt from a funding fee that could be tens of thousands of dollars because when you go to submit your application for your loan, for a VA loan, the document that your lender is looking at is not up to date. And so they have no reason to question it. If you did find this information helpful, please give the video a like as we are constantly working to try to educate and inform the consumers in our community and the nation as a whole. And with that being said, I wish y'all all the best in your real estate endeavors. Y'all take care and we'll see you in the next video.